What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Rowe and What's the Numbers is I provided. Today we're back with another profile piece. This one is on OTF Nunu. In this video, we're going to take a look at his early years growing up in the Inglewood section of Chicago. Then we will take a look at OTF Nunu's short-lived rap career and his relationship with his cousin, Little Dirk, who currently is one of the bigger rappers out of Chicago. And lastly, we will look at the situation surrounding OTF Nunu's death in May of 2014. MacArthur Swindle, aka OTF Nunu, is from Chicago, Illinois. Growing up in the Inglewood section of the city will be rough as a youth for OTF Nunu, who also goes by the name Nooski for short. The area will be flooded with gangs, drugs, and guns. But despite the dangers of his neighborhood, Nooski would still end up graduating from Simeon High School and going on to attend college for a short period of time before dropping out due to some financial aid issues. This is when Nooski would start rapping with the hopes of making it big like his cousin Little Dirk, who was starting to see some success in the music industry. Over time, Nooski's affiliation with the Black Disciples Street Gang would come to light through his different interviews where he claimed allegiance to the gang. Nooski was well spoken with a laid back demeanor and seemed to have a good head on his shoulders. In his interviews, he would tell the youth that life isn't all about gangbanging and that they could go to school and to college right like he did before he started rapping. Many of his fans didn't see a straight savage in Nooski, but instead see him as a product of his environment, where a good kid can go from being in school carrying textbooks to being on the block carrying guns and shooting at people all in a matter of weeks. During this time, he started releasing songs and videos back to back. His songs with his cousin Little Dirk would start to get him some recognition around the city and online as a rapper, but it would also give him a lot more ops, as Little Dirk and OTF had some issues around the city due to being affiliated with certain factions of the BDs. Nooski would do a couple of memorable Zach TV interviews during this time, showing the neighborhood and environment he comes from in Chicago. He would also start to record his debut mixtape, Nooski Got the Strap, during this time, hoping that it would be his breakout project. But unfortunately, before Nooski could release his mixtape, he would be shot multiple times by unknown gunmen while he sat in a vehicle outside the Chatham Village Square Mall in the south side of Chicago. He would attempt to flee from his assailants, but ultimately crash into a nearby store where he ended up dying at the scene. Nooski was only 21 at the time of his death. Nooski's death, like many others in Chicago, will be talked about in the streets, jails, and on social media. In Chicago's jail culture, people who have died often get spoke about or made fun of after their death. This will be the case with Nooski, as Little Dirk still had a lot of enemies in the city who felt like making fun of Nooski's death was a way of getting to Dirk, or at least would get under his skin. Mubu Crump will go on a year-long campaign of mocking Dirk about the death of his cousin Nooski. The disrespect would only stop when Mubu Crunk ended up being shot and killed outside of a party on the south side of Chicago in May of 2018. The next person to speak on Nooski during a beef for Little Dirk was snitch rapper Takashi69. The Brooklyn rapper known for his trolling would even go to Old Block to drop flowers off for of Nooski, even though Nooski isn't from Old Block. Eventually, Dirk seen Takashi for the clout chase he is and decided to stop going back and forth with the rapper and instead just ignore him. But sometimes in Chicago, People of rappers' names get bigger in death as whole blocks have been renamed after fallen members and ops continue to diss each other on social media to this day, talking about smoking on their dead ops and turning them into packs. But show is a quick profile piece on OTF Nunu, aka Nooski. Nooski got the strap and all that. Now, if you know he was down with OTF early, now if you know Dirk, he this has been consistent for him since he started. He always keeps some rappers under him or down with him or sign him, however you want to call it. And they actually got their own nice little way. Like, remember, he had L.A. Capone before, Rondo Number 9, who was kind of like, you know, had that buzz, you know, after. And then he had King Vaughn. You know what I'm saying? He had Nooski. Even though Nooski never got to release his, you know what I'm saying? But these are all people that he had before. And then he also, like I said, he had King Vaughn after, who ended up blowing up for, to a certain extent. So, you know, Dirk always going to keep his hand on a certain artists in Chicago. Some he may bring to the light and, you know what I'm saying, blow them up himself. And some just got that talent already that they probably would have blew anyway. Like, I'm sure if L.A. Capone was still alive or if Rondo Number 9 was free from jail, they definitely have some type of lane in the music industry, you know what I'm saying? But, like I said, this is on OTF Nunu. Now, you probably heard his name more and all that than you actually seen him or seen footage on him because he only had a quick little run that he was actually doing music, doing interviews. You know, he had some Zach TV interviews. He had a few tracks out there with Dirk. And um, even a couple of other people. But, you know, he didn't really get a chance to really even really get started for real. Now, when he got killed, you know, that's where the infamous picture that they got Little Dirk 
you know, I'm looking at him, looking at him through the car and all that. That picture went viral. A lot of um of Dirk's enemies or ops, as they call them, use that picture when they're talking about him, or they use it to you know mock him or like you know just kind of like throw shots at him. How they do in Chicago, you know, when they diss each other's dead homies and all that. So you know that was a big picture. That was a big time when that happened. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think after Nooski got killed is when Dirk might have moved out of the city after he caught that case and came home from jail and he was out of there after that he ain't been back and you know he's been flourishing ever since now but rest in peace to Nooski you know what I'm saying like I said he was like a laid back kid he didn't like he was into too much but you never know because looks to be deceiving and when you win that type of environment everybody might kind of got that in, in them you know what I'm saying if you out in that if you hanging around them people you might I'm pretty sure it's in you too so he was around it he might not been this usual savage you know just that showing guns every time you see him but he was definitely around it so Rest in peace to him. Shout out to him. And um, like I said, it's a quick profile piece. You know, I ain't really touching the Chicago thing, Chicago artists too much because so many people do the Chicago thing. But, you know, I still do be in tune with what they got going out there. And I've been wanting to do this one on OTF Nuno. So this one is a quick profile piece on him. Now, if you're messing with the channel, go subscribe up to the channel. About to get 38,000 subs. Go check the Instagram. And um, also the Patreons up there, the membership, the merch. Or if you got some type of business, holler at me on the email. But I ain't gonna hold y'all too long, man. It's What's the Numbers TV. It's your boy, Poro. Be back before you know it, man. We out of here. Peace.